Hey y'all, I'm James Wright and welcome to my shop. Today we are making sash clamps. This is a kit that was sent to me by a friend in Europe and this is something I've been wanting to do for a long time. So let's get to making this sash clamp and find out a little bit more about it. Clamp heads. Now these were sent to me by a fan of the channel, which I have to say a huge thank you. I've been wanting to get some for a while, but they were a little rusty and need some TSL. They would work perfectly the way they are, but yeah, I want to paint them blue uh, because they're in my shop. Of course, I want to paint them blue. <laughs> but we're going to take them apart, clean them up, and we need to get some rust oil and get the paint off. So we're going to put them in a bucket and then I'm going to be using WD-40 Rust Remover Specialist. Um, you can also use Vaporust. I use this because it's, it's close on hand and works almost identically to a Vaporust. Uh, and most of the stores locally carry it. Um, none of mine, for some reason, carry a Vaporust, though your big box stores might. Uh, so once that has been soaking, and actually I left it in there for like three days. Uh, you really only need to leave it in there for you know, a few hours to a day at most. Um, but you leave it in there all you want, and it really won't cause it that much of a problem as long as you don't leave it in there for months on end. And uh, we can wipe it off. The nice thing about leaving it a little bit longer is it also eats into the paint, so we can clean that off and wipe off all of the old paint, take it down to bare metal. And we don't have to take this into the uh, the spray booth and actually uh, uh, grind it all off with a, with a compressor. So we can wipe all that off, get off all the old paint, and uh, we're ready for uh, um, painting, basically. Just want to make sure we tape off anything we don't want paint. In this case, there really isn't much of any place where we don't want paint except where the screw goes in. And in that case, some earplugs do the trick perfectly. Those will fill them up nicely, and I'm going to be using uh, some Rust-Oleum metal uh, paint. I, I probably should have hit these with a primer first, but for the, the amount I use them, that actually works really well. It's just a, a simple Rust-Oleum uh, met metallic blue that I use. So we're going to make the beam out of oak, and this is a, a piece of red oak that is a full four quarters thick. Um, so it'll make pretty pretty well. I want it to be about four foot long as that's where I really like the clamps to be. Um, I don't use longer than that very often, but when I do, I can always make a longer beam or I do have a bunch of other ones that are longer. So we're gonna cut it off to four feet and I don't need it to be, uh, this one I think was three and a half inches um, wide and I don't need it to be quite that big. So I'm gonna take off about an inch. I'm gonna take it down to about uh, two and a half inches. That seemed to be about the right uh, depth for me and what I want. So we're gonna rip down a surface. And I, I don't know why, there's just something nice about handsaw ripping. You get the, the dust coming in there and when, you, when you're done, there's a, a, a solid sense, a sense of accomplishment. <laughs> a little bit of uh, paste wax on the saw if it's binding up and uh, getting hard to push it, it's amazing how fast that gets the saw going. There's a bunch of different ways you can hold a saw. If you get um, tired holding it one way or another, then you can switch it around and do another way. If you need uh, that last little bit, it's hard to hold on to, then you can clamp it onto your saw vise. It makes it a lot easier to keep that last bit in place. Now that we have that done, we can plane it down and joint it nice and smooth. It doesn't really have to be nice and smooth, but hey, we're working on it, so let's, let's do this right. Uh, it's going to be a clamp, so it doesn't have to be perfect, but, you know, while we've got it, let's have a little bit of fun. Chamfer off the corners so that you're not going to be getting any splinters and it feels good in the hand. Round over anything that's uh, not way, uh, that's not comfortable to you. And then we can start drilling the holes to actually attach this. Now, when figuring out the spacing for the holes uh, between them, what I find is I actually need to put the screw in and measure the movement of the screw. So if the screw moves three inches, I need the holes to be closer together than three inches. Um, and so I'm gonna end up putting the holes together. I think I had three and a half inches of movement and so I put the holes at three inches apart. Uh, that way I can move the screw in and out. So I'm gonna measure the hole and try and find a bit that's exactly that size. Unfortunately, the good wood owl that I had uh, was a little bit too small. So I started by drilling the wood owl and it came in really close, um, but in the end I had to go back and widen it out with a, with a twist bit um, because it wasn't, uh, wasn't exactly what I wanted. Uh, we're going to come through and mark them all out. Uh, let's see, what did I have in one? I had them two, two inches apart, so it was like two and a half inches that the screw moved. And then we can mark them into depth, that way we know that they're all in the right distance. To figure out that depth, you can actually put the bracket on there and then mark the hole. And uh, put a ring on the bit, because if you like it, then you should have put a ring on it. 
And uh, after this one is where I found out the, the wood owl was a bit too tight. It was just really, really crimping in there. So I came in with a twist bit. Um, oh, no, 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 I didn't do the twist bit. Well, I, I did the twist bit on that one to make it bigger. Um, but I had a, a, a full step larger. And so this was a, a good bit larger than it needed to be. But as long as the pin goes through, that's what really matters. And so you can see the pin goes through um, rather easily and holds it in place. So I ended up drilling all the holes a full size larger than they needed to be, but I didn't have the wood owl for that. Also, you can see I'm blowing out the backside rather than keeping them clean. Um, no really reason other than it's just faster than flipping the board around and doing the other side. Um, so I come back with a knife and clean off those splinters, and we'll see that in a little bit. So popping them out and you get all these splinters, and it looks horrible, but oh well, it's a clamp. <laughs> Plus, it gives you a good chance of, of learning to chamfer and uh, doing it with a, a knife. Um, it's kind of fun because you get the, the practice of going with the grain in each direction. If there's any uh, um, issues, you can work on it a little bit more. Oh yeah, that one I didn't I didn't put a twist bit in. I actually just filed it bigger and it pounded in because the one on the end um, doesn't have to move in and out. That one stays in place. That's where the, the screw goes in. And then for finish, it's boiled linseed oil and paste wax. Why boiled linseed oil and paste wax? I put it on all my hand tools. It's a great finish. Uh, it just it feels good in the hand. It's not incredibly protective, but the look and the color and the, the feel of it is, is very, very hard to match. So wipe it in with the, uh, the boiled linseed oil and then hit it with paste wax. Uh, wax up the screws, make everything the way we want it to, and then add a little bit of oil. And uh, we're good to put this together and, and test it out. You can see how the pins are all held in place with a chain. Make sure they're all oiled down so that we don't get any more rust. Put in that last retaining screw. And that's really all it is. It's a board with holes in it, and you put the hardware on. So there's not too much to this. And it's a, it's kind of a cool design, but uh, I wish that I could uh, get them here in the U.S. or have some others like it. So I hope you like that. A sash clamp. A really fun thing to have. Yay! Now, a lot of people ask me about my clamps, and I really wanted to do this because this is slightly different from what I have. This is a sash clamp. These are very common in Europe. Um, you can actually buy the kits there. Uh, they, I have not found a place where I can buy these kits in the US, though there are a few places in Europe that will ship them over here. Um, I haven't found any. These were actually sent to me by a fan, and I'm really, really happy because I've been wanting to get one of these for a long time. Uh, so a sash clamp is, an old style that's very, very similar to the beam clamps that I've been using, um, but being still available, it's something you can still buy. All of my clamps that I get asked about quite a bit are, are beam clamps, and rather than having a bolt going through, there's a detent underneath, so it's a little faster to slide them and connect them. Um, I love this design, and they're very hard to find. Uh, they're, they're, they're old, and the only place you can find them is antique stores and tool meets. So if someone ever did make the hardware for this, I'd be all over it. I haven't found yet anyone who would do that. I do have an old video where I worked with Wildman Tech and he actually made this set of hardware for it. Um, and he had talked about being able to make these for other people, um, but I haven't found one commercially available yet other than the sash clamp style. So I will leave a link to the sash clamps down below if you want to see those. And if anyone does know of a company that still makes these underclip beam clamps, I would love to hear about that. Um, or if there's a company out there who would like to work with me on uh, making them for sale, I would be glad to, uh, to work with that. Uh, one of those things rolling around the back of my mind of uh, possibly making these uh, for sale someday, but I don't know, we'll see. So there you have it. I, I hope this answers some of the questions because I get questions all the time about my beam clamps and uh, people um, giving me links to the, the sash clamps saying, ooh, they still make them. They're, they're very similar, but they're, they're slightly different. Moving the pin takes a little bit more time. And uh, yeah, I, they're, they're great clamps, don't get me wrong. Um, I would probably get a few more of these in the future, but I would love to get someone who can still make these style because these are, are just so much fun to use. So I'd love to hear your thoughts and ideas down below. Is there something I'm missing? Is there something that you found that I would like to see? Please let me know. But I think that'll about do it. I also want to say a huge thank you to the patrons on Patreon, members here on the channel. You guys are the ones making this channel happen. So thank you for that. Without members and patrons, this channel would not exist. And so if you do ever meet anyone who's scrolling over here on the side, don't forget to say hi to them and thank them for keeping the lights on. I think that's about it for now. And until next time, have a wonderful day. You know, in olden days, they had this big bright red ribbon that would go across the chest of really important people. And the way they held that on is with a sash clamp.